Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group, and today is February 1st, 2024. And I mean, we've got some stories. Let's go through them. First story coming around the corner is America enemies are hoping we go green. Uh, that's so we can have some seriously high priced energy. Let's go to the next story with green crime. An electric car wins solar crime wave i mean this is nuts ai surges catches the u.s grid off guard keeps coal plants in business uh there's a lot to this story hey let's come around the corner and go over to pond to Sa uh, saudi arabia and it orders a ramco to lower the capacity target i talked to david blackman about this story Let's also go over to Norway. Uh, Norway defends deep sea mining, says it may help break China and Russia's rare earth strongholds. Uh, I tell you, this story brings up a lot of uh, uh, ESG questions, and uh, I want to give a shout out to some of our Substack folks. So um, with that, let me get started here. Uh, as always, go ahead and please subscribe, like, subscribe to our newsletter, Substack. We want you, and I'm telling you what, our website is going nuts, energynewsbeat.co. Uh, yesterday, we had uh, 35,000 people on the site from all over the world, and today, I think we're going to go over to 40K today, so People love our news stories there, so uh, reach out, and if you want on the podcast, we will be at NAEP next week. Here's a great story, and this one is America's enemies are hoping we go green, and uh, let's see, this one is from MSN uh, BC, so uh, when we sit here and take a look, the White House halts enormous natural gas project in victory for environmentalists. That is a gigantic mistake uh, based on this uh, administration. Uh, the world is unbelievably tied to Russia natural gas. And we stood up and told our natural gas folks uh, our allies around the world, Biden said, we will support you and supply all the natural gas. And then uh, they go and do this so that they can win back their green. Guess who's winning out of our ban uh, on the natural gas delays and other things that they're considering right now. They're banned for any new uh, contracts or any other LNG. And that is China, Qatar, and you're taking a look at several others as well, too. And Russia couldn't be happier. So the world is leaving the United States because of our current administration's global economic policies in order to pacify their global Green New Deal folks. You have to remember that the EIA put out the reason the U.S. lowered their emissions by 20%. Remember, China in last year raised theirs by 220% because of their coal plants going in. And we lowered ours because of natural gas. So we got to think about this here, guys. Let's go ahead and go over the next one here. This is pretty crazy. Just when you thought it was safe to go to an EV, green crime, an electric car, wind and solar crime wave. Uh, this article is really pretty, uh, pretty sad. The Inflation Reduction Act uh, intends to spend 7.5 billion taxpayer money to build charging stations for electric car owners. Two years later, no EV chargers were built, and that's good. And part of the problem is Seattle began installing dozens of EV chargers and only to have thieves show up and raid at least eight of the charging cables for copper, requiring thousands of dollars worth of repairs. 
They're also going over copper is toppling FM radio tower in Oklahoma. And it is just nuts. So you take a look at the copper and rare earth minerals that are being needed to help go into the grid thieves and the price for, um, uh, you know, copper is just going nuts. So uh, buckle up. And if you are driving an EV, more power to you. In Fresno, there was $100,000 in copper wire stolen from a solar farm. Um, so uh, they're the top of the food chain for theft because they're usually away from folks. So copper thieves cut into a turbine and hauled out cables and then drive away costing millions of dollars in theft. So in the UK, there's a 48% increase in solar and cable green copper theft and 5,000 major solar thefts around uh, Europe. Got to give a shout out to Tammy Nemeth on this. Uh, she found this story and uh, she is a very much a worldwide industry thought leader. Hey, let's roll over to AI on this one. AI surge catches U.S. grid off guard and keeps coal plants in business. You know, it's kind of sad that the thieves are keeping, uh, you know, everything, the poor grid folks from trying to keep it going. But AI and the number of data centers that are going on had a great interview uh, about AI and the increase of security that we needed. And uh, it is just crazy. Bloomberg reports that a patch of Northern Virginia, which is called the Daters, Datus, Dater, that's how Texas talks, a data center alley, which has seen explosive growth. Well, that happens to also be coal country. Um, and so uh, the power problem is not limited to Virginia has been seen going across the United States. And so you take a look at Amazon and you take a look at Google and you take a look at the other folks that are looking to put in uh, big uh, data farms. They need low cost energy and they need to put them actually in the geothermal areas of the country. So geothermal is about the cheapest that you're gonna get in many ways. Um, and I would put my, I would park my data center right next to a nuclear facility. Love me some nuclear. Hey, let's go over the pond here to Saudi Arabia orders Aramco to lower capacity target. You know, I thought that this was a way when I first heard this, that it was going to be a way to manipulate oil prices. But when we take a look at this article, I talked to David Blackman about this earlier today and he brought out some fantastic points, and it was because uh, they, in its latest report, uh, OPEC forecast that demand for oil would grow about 1.3 million barrels per day by the end of 2025. The producer uh, group would only be able to unwind a third of the current OPEC cuts of close to 4 million uh, BB, uh, barrels per day. So this reduction in CapEx really is a smart move by the Saudi uh, Arabia government. And Saudi Aramco shares closed up, uh, looks like 0.02% and uh, or $8.35 at 3130 Riles. Uh, and so this is an absolute wonderful thing for them to protect their cash flow, protect their CapEx. They are doing what's right. Saudi uh, Arabia is doing Saudi first. They're also investing in renewables technology using the profits. I call this good management, and good numbers. So uh, Aramco in the last two quarters paid its shareholders nearly $10 billion in performance length dividends. Uh, my first thought was this was not necessarily good. Talking to David Blackman, he really helped turn my corner on how I thought about this. 
Norway defends deep sea mining, says it may help break China and Russia's rare earth uh, stronghold. Uh, this one might be also a either Tammy Nemeth or Irina Slav email that had this one in it. And uh, Norway, uh, I love Norway uh, from the standpoint that they have a lot of natural gas. They several years ago they had slowed down and were turning off their natural gas fields. They have a lot of hydro that they sell to other countries. But let's go through the top bullet points in this. In a vote earlier this month that attracted cross-party support, Norway par Parliament voted 80 to 20 to approve the government proposal to a vast ocean area for commercial deep sea mining. I honestly do not know the ESG impact of deep sea mining. I'm going to be studying this. And the environmental campaign groups say that the approval of an uh, extremely destructive process sends a terrible signal to the rest of the world. The problem that Norway is trying to solve is that they turn back on their natural gas fields. They are now a major supplier through the fee, uh, their gas pipelines to the UK and the EU. And then when you sit back and take a look, we have China. And we have um, uh, it's crushing uh, it's crushing blow to the uh, critical minerals, and so you couldn't even think about doing EVs or the um, uh, energy transition. However, I want to give a shout out to um, Pablo Hill on the Crude Truth Substack. He put out there. And his comment was, China on book, um, ah, this was on a different one. I would just want to give him out a shout out. This was on actually the China on the uh, book oil, Pablo Hill on the Crude Truth Substack. I'm not, I had an interview with Captain Current uh, Kelly. He is such an ocean uh, uh, defender of the ocean that I'm going to reach out to him and some of the uh, issues that were out there were that in the deep, deep coal, uh, like the North Sea, deep sea mining may not have as big of a environmental impact. I don't know. But on the other hand, we've got to figure out ways of not harming the children in the Congo and taking advantage of Africa, and then also getting away from the stranglehold on uh, China. None of this is easy. And if you have solutions, uh, give me a call. Thank you again to all of our wonderful subscribers. Um, RT, David, myself, and Jay Young will be at NAEP. We will be doing live podcasts. We'll have three or four we have four booths, but we may have three or four different total sections. We have great um, uh, guests lined up, and we're going to have a lot of fun. Stay tuned, buckle up, and enjoy the ride, guys. Stay safe out there.